Across the web, there's a host of hoax theories claiming NASA faked this footage. Look at the size of that rock! And a ton of TV covering the conspiracy claims. But no one has actually taken the time to test them. Until now. The next task in our moon myth-busting is this photo here. What conspiracy theorists say is that he's too well lit. You can see him clearly, yet he's in this black, black shadow of the LEM. There's only one light source on the moon. That's the sun. Conspiracy theorists claim there must be a second one making him visible, and we're going to find out. And to do just that, the guys are going to shine a substitute sun on the very model of a modern miniature landing module. Oh, and a surprisingly talkative toy astronaut. This is my 1-6 scale model of Neil Armstrong. I can tell it's Neil because he's got the red commander of the mission stripes on his suit. What's that, Neil? We really went to the moon. I know. But the thing is, is that in order to prove that, we gotta take some photographs, and to take some accurate photographs, I gotta make a ship for you, a home for you. Okay. So these rolls of paper behind me are actually a lunar landing module in Potentia, which I'm about to slap together. And courtesy of what's known in the editing biz as a few jump cuts, here it is. <laughs> Conspiracy theorists are saying that the shot had to have been faked using a fill light. Personally, I think it's because the moon's surface is reflective. And when you think about it, you look at the moon on a clear night, it's obviously reflecting light back at you. That's why you see it. The question here is, is it enough to create this shot? To test Jamie's hypothesis that the mythical fill-in light is simply sunlight bouncing back off the moon's surface, the guys black out the set. Behold our moon landing set. Because it's all about reflectivity, we put blacks all around the shop, covered the whole set to eliminate any spill, any reflective light that's not coming directly from our moon's surface. That's the landing module, astronaut, lights, and camera sorted. Dude, this looks so cool. The only missing component is a moon dust analog that accurately reflects the reflective quality of the real stuff. The dust that covers the moon is called regolith. When the sunlight shines upon the moon, regolith reflects a certain amount of sunlight back towards Earth. That reflective quality is called its albedo. Now, the albedo of moon dust is between 7 and 10 percent, according to our sources at NASA. To make our version of regolith, we use Portland cement and charcoal powder. Now, to measure the albedo, or reflected light coming off of it, we used Whoa. a light meter and our fake sun. 8%, dude, that is perfect. What we just showed with this test is that our sample regolith has a reflective index of about 8%, which makes it ideal for us to test with. This is the moment of truth. We've got an accurately shaped and textured moon lander, and we've concocted an accurate moon surface that has the same reflectivity index as the actual moon. If the myth is to be believed, our astronaut on the dark side in the shadow of the lander is gonna just fade to total black when we try and take a picture of him. All right, you ready? I'm set. All right, here we go. Taking the photo. Let's see. There it is. Oh, there you go. He's standing full on in the shadow, and you'd think you wouldn't be able to see him. He'd be dark, but he's not. He's in brightest day. The myth here is that you would not be able to see this astronaut this clearly unless there was a secondary fill light illuminating him. Because he's in the shadow and there's only one light source on the moon, he would, by definition, be black. Our photo here proves just the opposite that with a single light source, with the surface of the same reflectivity as the moon, our astronaut is clearly visible, busting that myth.